Craig, this is obviously a working site. I mean, there's, there's not much of a garden happening here at the moment, even though this is quite an established house and it had a garden. What was the whole thing that you had to come in and do here? So this is a bit of a turnkey installation. We're doing hardscapes as well as uh, softscapes. And what happens there is generally speaking, we'll, I always say it's like in the army where they, they break you down before they build you up. So we remove a lot of uh, plants out of the garden. There are a lot of levels that have changed. Um, there's been a pool that's been installed, uh, an awning installed, and now we're busy with the, the brickwork and the paving. And after that, when we finish with, or, or when we finish with most of that, we'll start with the planting um, to try and uh, get the soft scapes in last because they can be damaged more easily than anything else. Now, paving is something that is critical. You really do need to get it right. And there's different ways of doing paving. The one thing that always freaks me out when I'm looking at paving are slopes. Yeah, so uh, runoff is a big, a, a big issue um, when it comes to rain runoff and also when you're wanting to wash your, your paving. So you need to take cognizance of where gutters exit uh, as well as where the rain comes from and if there's water entering your paved area from another area. Mm. And once you've worked out your levels, you can then comfortably start uh, paving according to the, the correct slopes to get the water away from the house ideally and um, towards drainage. If you've got drainage walls in your property uh, leading down to the lower lying properties, mm -hmm. then that's ideally where you want to get your water runoff to end up. Well, it's bit, I mean, when it comes to a garden, obviously, if you've got a very heavy slope, you can always step it and have different levels. Terraces. That, that looks very nice in a lot of gardens. It makes for more interesting space. Um, quite often when we have clients that have got a slope in their garden, they would complain about the slope. Oh, I've got the slope. I don't know what to do with it. But in reality, it, it really makes for an interesting, an interesting garden compared to just a, a flat space. Mm. Um, you have different viewpoints and uh, different ways of looking at things. So if you have raised planters, you have a, a different view of the plants than you would have if you're looking from... Uh, 1.6, 1.7 meters where a lot of people's eyes seem, seem to be. Mm. So what are some of the key points that you would give to somebody who decides, right, I'm going to go and get some pavers and I'm going to put them in my garden myself, but I want to have them permeable and slightly spaced apart. How does one go about doing that to begin with? Firstly, you'd have to get your, your levels correct. So you dig out to where you have to and fill in where you have to. Wherever you're filling, you should be compacting. Mm -hmm. If you're filling quite a large uh, depth uh, or height difference, you're going to want to fill in layers and compact in layers. Is. Otherwise, what happens is the first water that comes along, um, all the air gaps disappear as, as the, the, the ground compacts from the moisture. And then you sit with the problem of uh, dropping paving. So then you'll, that's why often you'll see where people have got driveways and they've put a pipe across the driveway at some point in time and it wasn't properly compacted. You'll see a little, what looks like a gully or a gutter, which wasn't intended to be there. Yeah. So when you're setting out your paving stones, quite often they'll be somewhere between 400 or 450 mils a square up to uh, five or 600 um, millimeters square paving blocks. The big flagstones. Big yeah. flagstones. And with those, the easiest way to space them out is that will allow you to plant or put uh, gravel or, 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 or uh, pebbles in between is using uh, small cobblestones. Mm -hmm. So small cobblestones are uh, typically 100 by 100 mils, so it gives you a, a reasonable enough uh, spacing. Um, you can go smaller than that, but it's just the easiest way to set them out. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you can use building lines as well to follow the the, the line of the pavers, but um, it's, it's, if you want to do it really quickly and keep consistent, I'd suggest using using cobbles in between. And as you go and you start planting, you start removing them again, and then you can always use them for cobble edging in your in your garden. That's a very good idea. So I mean, the first thing, obviously, then as you said, levels, make it level, then put down river sand and compact, compact. it. Yes. But now if you're planting in between your pavers, you're not going to be able to put weed guard down or would you still do that and then just cut the weed guard to be able to plant in between? It's too onerous to, to, to put weed guard down if you're going to be planting in between because you're going to be cutting many, many, many holes and the, the weed guard is only really going to be covering under the flagstones, which are <laughs> it kind of defeats a purpose because yeah. your, your flagstones are going to also prevent uh, weeds from coming up from the bottom. But any uh, weeds that do grow on top, if you're putting gravel or pebbles down and you do get the odd weed growing through, it's very easy to remove them. They don't, they don't have a very deep root system because the weed guard is, is preventing that and obviously it prevents um, new shoots from popping, yes. popping through. Okay, so any other last little hints and tips you can give to people that they should take in and really think about when they are going to do some permeable paving in their own home? I would say just remember that there are a lot of colors and different styles of, of, of flagstones. It's not a generic thing, so don't just go to your local uh, nursery and pick up what they've got. Look around and see what you'd like, because there are a, a number of different manufacturers mm. and they all offer different styles. And you can find something that'll go nicely with your, your architectural style and your personal taste. Um, it's not a generic item, which sometimes people think it is, because they all 
uh, flagstones are generally square, mm. but you can also find um, some that are, are more rectangular, and um, you can even use things like crazy paving, which which is basically slate, and it's it's all random. The old slaster, old slaster, yeah. yeah. And that can look fantastic in the right environment. Uh, it's just a question of knowing what you want and what's going to go with your ho house, and also look on on social media, look at, at platforms like uh, Pinterest, where um, y you'll see a million different ideas. It's not always, it's not not certainly not one solution for 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 paving. Paving doesn't always have to be impenetrable hard surfaces. Often there's ample opportunity for ground covers that allow water to filter into the earth. Large areas of paving can be very boring and monotonous. So if you have inherited a house where you've got a lot of paving, think about perhaps breaking it up so that you can plant something in between. In fact, I had a place which was just full of slaster, so I pulled it all up, reset it, and planted in between it. And as you can see, there are so many different ranges these days of plants, the different forms, different leaf shapes, different colors, that you'll definitely find something that suits your needs. But we're gonna be looking at the three which really suit my needs, and I have actually actually use them in the past in my own garden. And by the way, if you're doing your own paving, put this into your brain when you start. First of all, the one which is one of the most hardy, indigenous little ground covers going, Daimondia. This one, as you can see, has got these slightly curled in leaves, silver on the bottom, green on the top. They grow quite flat, and then through spring and summer, they get tiny little yellow flowers, very water-wise, like full sun. And in the warmer areas, they are sure to grow really well. And they can cover quite quickly, so make sure that you plug, plant each little plug next to each other and keep the spacing right. You don't want to really overgrow everything. The second one, which I think is possibly one of the favorites for everybody going, of course, is this little beauty here. This is the Kyoto Dwarf in the Ophiopogon. Doesn't get much taller than this. You get the other variety, the Evergreen Giants, which get really big. But these ones are perfect for in-between pavers. Nice thing about these as well, full sun to shade. So you can plant them pretty much anywhere. And as they get bigger, you can pull them out and divide them and make more plants. It's a no-brainer for me, quite frankly. You go everywhere. One that I really like to use, though, especially if it's an area where I'm walking or sitting quite a lot, of course, is Pennyroyal, which is the Mentha Puligia or Requienii. The smell of this is just unbelievable. I wish you could smell it right now. Gets to about five centimeters high, spreads each one of these little boxes, will spread to at least 20 centimeters, fairly well growing. Just make sure that they get a good amount of sun and water well, making sure that they've got great drainage. You don't want to be putting them into something that their roots will rot. Any of these in between your paving is going to make for much softer looks. You really don't want all that hardness and also it'll cool the area down a little bit and make sure you don't have major amounts of runoff.